Mohuds, it's it's a uh, it's a sense of camaraderie. It's an addiction and a love for cars. Mohud is fun. It's fun. You know, it's really fun. To me, it's still the biggest thrill. It's one of them things that when you join, you just join and you're there forever because you enjoy what, what it's about. Hi, my name is Russell Burkhardt. I'm regional executive for the Mohawk Hudson Region Sports Car Club of America. Bill, were you on there? No, I, no, that's how I roped you in. Uh, that's how you volunteered for that. <laughs> the regional executive would be the equivalent of a president or a CEO. Uh, you know, they're just different clubs call them different different things. Uh, so our, our elected officials, our regional executive, assistant regional executive. Hi, this is uh, Jim Bucci. I'm a 20-year uh, member of uh, the Mohawk Hudson region, and I uh, currently serve as the assistant regional executive. Uh, we have a couple directors at large, uh, secretary, treasurer, uh, activities director, uh, they're, I believe they're pretty much all our, all our elected officials. And MOHUD was established in 1956. Now, back in 1956, you had to be referred to be a member. Today, you know, it's basically, you know, you fill out the paperwork and send it in. You don't, you don't have to know anybody. So it's a lot easier to become a member now than it was back in the 50s. You look at the cars from the 50s to the cars from now, you know, they're, they're a whole lot different. Well, what's going on here? These days we called it autocrossing, uh, and now it's uh, called solo. And just previous to this, they, they had a thing called, they called gymkhanas, where you ran, ran through the pylons like they're doing here, but at the same time, you might stop and have to back into a garage made by pylons in reverse and go forward and things like that. Um, and this has to be in the late 60s. In the 70s, most of the shopping centers were closed on Sundays. So it was very relatively easy to get a parking lot. Of course, all the malls are open on Sundays now. And it's hard to find good pavement that's big enough for us to do this. This is what I started doing. And I came and I won. The next thing I knew, I was, they gave me a $2 trophy and I was suckered in for life, you know. And they had a driver school in this parking lot. This is the peripheral lot. I recognize this. Exactly. Yeah. This is the peripheral lot on Washington Avenue in Albany. You can see the Towers University in the background and parts of the state campus in the background. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Jack Hannafin, and I'm the competition chairman for Mohawk Cuts and Region, um, which basically means I, I do all the, I'm in charge of all the club racing we do. Uh, competition. <laughs> okay. Um, a bunch of little things here. The tech party, which is not a little thing, I guess, is a week from Saturday. I uh, really do a lot of officiating. I'm also a steward, uh, and I was the executive steward in the Northeast, which meant I was in charge of all the racing in the Northeast, but uh, I retired from that several years ago. And uh, you know, just been doing this for 40 years. I don't win like I used to. <laughs> I'm one of those guys, the the older I get, the faster I was, you know. Most cars didn't even have seat belts. I don't even know if you had to have a helmet back then. In the old days, just any helmet would do. And some of the open cars didn't have roll bars in, them they, uh, in those days. And, you know, it's, it, I feel it's a lot better now because it is a lot safer. We have a, a person that goes around and does tech on all the vehicles. And we need to make sure that the, uh driver's harness has either a... Um, I'm Rich Welty, the Chief FIA Technical Inspector of the Mohawk Hudson yeah. Region of the SCCA, and we're here for our annual Tech Day at Bob Carl's in Troy, New York, and we're about to start looking at a Formula V to go through and do the annual safety inspection on the race car. This is the vehicle logbook. Um, every race car in the SCCA has one of these. Um, there's an identity number assigned to each one, and then we have a running log of information about all of the events that the car has been to over time. And this is just the way that we keep track of what happens with the car. So today we're doing an annual tech, so we'll be filling out this page after we inspect the car. The type of car is a Formula V. It's called V for VW because it is built around a collection of uh, early 60s vintage uh, VW bug parts. Um, it has a 
1200 cc VW flat four air-cooled engine. Uh, the front axle is just basically straight out of the VW bug um, with the uh, two lateral torsion bars inside the steel tubes and then you see that the uh, brake and clutch cylinders are just basically hung out in front of the axle tube and they have rods that go back to the pedals. We look up here and see the oil cooler mounted up here then the carburetor um, so that's feeding right in there. Um, and we've got the convoluted exhaust and then of course the glove does not stay on the exhaust during, uh, during the race. It's really an extremely simple car. Uh, at the tech party we held earlier this year, uh, the race cars show up to that because their tech is a little more involved. Well, historically tech was something that had to be done well, going back a long way, tech was done at every single race, <laughs> and it was a colossal pain for all involved. And it was impossible to do thorough techs on cars when you had to tech them at every single event. Once you get tech out, if you get to the track and you show your logbook and you're good to go, you know, that's much easier than everybody's there. And tech only has one or two people, let's say, come in on a Friday, and then you're waiting there, and people are getting annoyed. And this is much easier. Much more easy. Uh, Johannes Kraft, driver of the H production, Scirocco, also a Stewart, and uh, yeah, that's it. And so the tech party really came into play when uh, it allows you to get the annual tech out of the way early in the year, so that you don't have a line of 150 cars um, on a Friday morning at Lime Rock, which is always a challenge. Now this is a production car which means a couple of things. One of the things it means is that it has allowed quite a bit more latitude and modifications um, to the engine and the suspension over um, the other cars that we've looked at that are based on production shells. The extent of the modification kind of depends on how it's brought into the production class. So we just kind of want to look it over. We want to look at the firewall and make sure there are no holes between the engine compartment and the passenger compartment. We want to make sure there's no obvious leaks. Of course, if it's a British car, then there are going to be leaks, obvious or not. That's the only way you know you have oil. Yeah. But basically, everything it looks clean and secure. Um, nothing is going to come loose in here. Um, and that's tensioned appropriately. That's tensioned appropriately. They're in good condition. In a properly kept engine compartment, there's generally not a whole lot to see. So that looks good. Okay. So, yeah, we see he's got an off switch sticker there, so we want to see that the off switch is um, within reasonable reach of the sticker. The sticker on the outside is a message to the corner workers where they will find the off switch if they reach inside the car, so you need to make sure that it's not lying to them. We've got the E sticker for the fire system, and if you look in here, you'll see the fire pole is right there. You can take just about any car off the street, and as long as it goes through the tech portion and passes that, you can compete. The vehicle of choice for me for autocross is the 2013 Ford ST. That's a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, puts out 252 horsepower and about 270 foot-pounds of torque. So what that equates to here is it just goes. It, it pulls real good out of the corners. It has uh, oversized brakes compared to a regular Focus. It has an upgraded suspension compared to a regular Focus. So for daily driving, that makes it a little bit stiffer hitting the bumps. But for, for what we do on the autocross, it keeps the car relatively flat so that it will handle a whole lot better. So Sunday's event, we had 42 entries. Like this site here is one of our sites that we use. McCarty had its typical grip level of next to nothing. <laughs> I go behind the scenes and I acquire uh, permission to use the site, uh, get everything ready to, to be able to hold events here from insurance to portable toilets to you know whatever, whatever the needs uh, for the site are. The every time we come to the course, uh, or, or to the to the site, 
uh, the course has not usually been predetermined and in, in the case of today uh, we aren't we weren't able to use a course that was was predetermined so the course had to be adjusted to fit what the facility will allow every time we come here the course will have uh, a different layout my name is Robert Hewis I go by Bert I've been doing this for about seven years been a member of Mohud for about six of those uh, about a year after I started autocrossing, I started uh, designing courses. I usually have a plan. I usually uh, use like TurboCAD, a, a CAD uh, program to draw it out. This particular lot, I don't like to do that because there's so many cars that could be in there, like yesterday. <laughs> and so usually I just figure it out as I go. And today I just had a route in mind that I want to do, and then I'll, I'll work it out, change it make sure it works, and we have to um, abide by our safety rules, so that's why a lot of things get changed. As soon as you clear him, we're good to go. Things like straightaways, uh, speeds and stuff, we gotta keep it below highway speed, 65 miles an hour. Um, turns, you don't want a stock car going more than 50 in a turn in this lot. I mean, they. The rules allow more than that, but in this lot, it, because of the confines of it, it, we need to keep speeds down. Looks good from here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, course is hot. ready, man. Basically, for today, we're going to start over by where my car is on the east side. And we're going to make a little Yui. And then we're going to come out and make a left and then do a little slalom where we're standing. Up through these poles, we're going to take a left. We'll do some switchbacks. Slalom type maneuvers before they'll finish. The the types of vehicles that are good here, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, I got to get me a Vet or a Ferrari or a Lotus or or whatever. They're not necessarily going to be your best cars. Probably one of your better cars for today is and we have a lot of them miatas you know what do they have 120 horsepower horsepower isn't isn't a big key to here handling is i'm greg kuda um, i enjoy the miatas um, there's a lot of information out there parts are cheap um, they're very fast the street prepared class allows for our compound tires, which are quite a bit faster than street tires. At least they used to be. Street tires are getting better all the time. So that's why I have the tire trailer. This car, the tires are much wider than stock. It's got a full suspension on it with coilovers, heavier springs, sway bars, bushings, all that fun stuff. And of course, the goal would be to try to get fast time of the day. So that's why I would do something like this. No, I didn't get fast time of the day, but at least I'm in the hunt. The club relies on volunteers for most of the duties that need to be done. At the event, there's timing and scoring. Uh, at our local solo events, that job is held by Eric Smith. Good morning. I'm E.J. Smith. I'm the Chief of Timing and Scoring for Mohawk Hudson SCCA. This is my 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8. Uh, fully race prepared. It's in street modified category, and uh, I compete in this.
it's his job to make sure that every car that competes gets not only a time, but their time. I don't know if we mentioned anything about the timing and scoring issues that we're going to experience today. Uh, the laptop is spontaneously shutting down on us, so we had to abandon the laptop. So we we are going full Amish today. We are recording everything on paper. We still have the timing equipment, so it will be very precise. Um, so what it does takes times. It'll automatically apply what's known as a PAX factor, and that's a that's a multiplier that's used to try to equalize the performance of the cars. Based on that, you can compare cars within class, or you can compare cars top to bottom, all the entrants. Supposedly, with the PAX applied, they're all on equal footing from a timing perspective. And we will usually produce a report that lists top entrant to bottom entrant. No shame in being the bottom entrant unless you've been here a long, long time. We try to encourage them. Don't pay so much attention to the times that you get or where you place. You know, just focus on improving yourself as a driver. You want to try to compare your like, skills against well, somebody else, right. but when you get know, the cars that, that are just all over the board, there? you know, it's just you're allowed to mess with the You don't want it to be about money, but I know, or, or I know you, know, you can how much how much time and effort the guy put into this car to build it up and put parts yeah, into they, it. They regularly. You'd like to compare yourself man to man, person to person, driver to driver. Becoming a member of the club is not just to be part of, of a motorsport organization, but it basically opens you up to a, a new family. You know, you, you open yourself up to a new set of uh, new set of friends. That's the way that the club is. It's a lot of people will you know go out of their way to help you. Looks like a lot of fun so far. Now you know this is the nudist club, right? <laughs> DJ McCarl. It's people who speak the same language. Sometimes you'll start talking to people about what we do, and their eyes just glaze over. They really don't understand. Or, you know, you're trying to explain, you know, well, I, I do high performance driving, I do time trials, I do club racing, I do ice racing, whatever. And it's just, it's all racing. They don't really understand the, the nuances of it where we can talk about it and, and understand it. it makes a lot of sense. My wife used to get a little annoyed with me for coming to all these car events. And, uh, so I had her come with me one time to one of the solo events. And while I was getting the car packed up, you know, I had person after person stop over and talk with me and, and want to talk about the event and the, the, the things that happened during the day and at the end of the day she just looked at me and she kind of smiled and she said you know I get it I get it now it's not so much about the cars but it's about the socialization and the camaraderie that you experience here and ever since that time that she came she doesn't give me any problems about going to an event the other people in the club become you know just like family to you